first example, um, rotate the region going back to uh, volume of revolution, or the region bounded by, let's see, y equals the inverse tangent of x, y equals 0, and uh, x equals 1 about the, the y-axis. Okay. And after you rotate, find the volume of the solid of revolution. So, um, hmm. let's see if we can draw a little picture. Do you remember how the inverse sine function looks like? If this is x, the inverse sine, uh, remember we bounded between negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2 because the sine, the tangent, I'm sorry, did I say inverse sine? I meant inverse tangent. Has an asymptote at these values, so it's bounded by the asymptote. Remember, the tangent has a vertical asymptote. The inverse tangent, being the inverse, has a horizontal asymptote at either pi over 2 on the one side and then a negative pi over 2 on the other side. And it goes like this. Um, This is pretty much the, the, the shape of the inverse tangent, okay? So we bound it by, um, by y equals 0 and then by x equals 1. What is the inverse tangent of, uh, of, uh, of 1? Well, that would be pi over 4, halfway through, right? So this is x equals 1 and it corresponds to pi over 4. So we have this line x equals 1. And x equals 1 correspond to pi over 4. Okay, so <clears throat> we take this region right there and we rotate it about the, uh, the y-axis like so. So look to me that uh, what is the best method here? Shell, somebody said so. Shell would be the best method. So here's the little shell, and we rotate it, so it's going to show up right here. So we have this solid revolving like so. Okay? All right, so we'll use, using the cylindrical shell, remember we need the thickness, we need radius, when we need height. In case you forgot, the thickness will be dx, the radius will be x, and the height will be uh, y equals tangent, inverse tangent of uh, x, the function itself. So the volume will be 2 pi, the integral of uh, the radius times the height, x times the inverse tangent of x dx. Now we evaluate x from 0 to 1. Right? Now, 
Uh, so now I can do some stuff here, uh, but because I gave you this uh, wonderful handout, so let's go and see if we have, uh, if we look at the reference table pages and we see what or where we can find a formula that will be uh, uh, suitable here. Okay, and look, 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 and I'm a little bit ahead of you, I guess, and I'm looking at formula 92. Uh, I don't know if you can see it on the screen, but you have the hard copy, so it's the integral of u tangent, inverse tangent of u du, and it looks like u squared plus 1 over 2 times the inverse tangent of u minus uh, u over 2 plus c, and this is an obvious, if you have one term uh, translated into two, you probably think about uh, integration by parts, uh, and you might be right if, if you think so. But, <clears throat> so, by formula 92, we have the following. Um, V equals 2 pi times, instead u is x, so 2 pi, and then we have x, um, x squared plus 1 over 2, inverse tangent of x. minus x over 2, and remember 2 pi multiply everything, so like so. And we need to evaluate from 0 to 1. Don't forget we are dealing with a definite integral now, right? So we'll plug, it, plug 1 and plug 0 and see what happened. So we have the 2 pi multiply everything. So we have 2 over 2, so that's 1, and the inverse tangent of 1 is pi over 4. So we have pi over 4 and minus 1 half. And then when we have the 0, let's see, we have 1 half, the inverse tangent of 0 is 0. So we have 0 here and minus 0 here. So this is pretty much the end of the story. So we have 2 pi squared over 4 or pi squared over 2 minus pi. Uh, 